Good morning, everyone. Uh, this is Siva Devaki from uh, MassMailer. Thanks for joining uh, the webinar today. Uh, today, we are going to discuss about uh, the email sender authentication. And I'll uh, go a little deep into uh, two of the standard protocols here that's called SPF and DKIM. Um, that way, you kind of understand uh, how the email sender authentication uh, works and then uh, how you can actually improve the email deliverability. So, what is email authentication? When you are sending out an email, uh, so today you may be using your own email server, Gmail, Yahoo, or Outlook, or any other email server, or even mass mailer, you're sending an email, right? Uh, you got to prove that the email is coming from you, not from someone else. Uh, oftentimes, you may have seen the news that uh, you know there are a lot of uh, 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 fishy emails that have um, gone from so and so organization, it could be a bank or anyone else, and they'll say, hey, uh, do not trust. Uh, if at all you receive an email um, with so and so content, uh, because we never send those kind of emails, uh, it is a fishy email, right? Uh, so those are more like forged emails. So someone else is trying to force uh, your email domain, and then they're sending email on your behalf. Uh, how do you really avoid that? So basically, um, you know, if you have a document, you're signing, uh, that, uh, how do you prove that it's not a forced signature and it is an authenticated signature? So something similar, right? Uh, you got to provide uh, a way for the receiver um, when you're sending out email that, uh, hey, I'm the authenticate, uh, I'm um, the authenticate sender and I'm not forging this email. Um, so that's what is the email authentication uh, is all about. Uh, that way, when you use this email authentication protocol, uh, you're avoiding any kind of uh, uh, fraudulent usage of your domain uh, for uh, phishing or spamming emails. Uh, and there are certain um, uh, protocols or standards uh, that are used in the industry. Uh, there are three of them. Uh, we're going to take a look at uh, two of them today. It's called SPF, DKIM, and DMARC. So these are, uh, you know, prominent industry standard protocols for authenticating uh, your email. How does the email authentication work? Uh, at a very high level, there are four steps here. Uh, one is basically, um, you know, the sender, whoever is the sender, uh, will have to establish certain rules. Uh, when you're sending out emails, uh, you have to establish certain rules in your organization, and then you have to configure those rules, and then publish those rules, um, which are available publicly, right? And then a receiver uh, will look at those rules and then they will authenticate the sender because these are available publicly. Um, and when you're sending out email, um, you're also sending out email signature or the email header. So there are a bunch of things that happen uh, when the email gets received by the receiving server. Uh, and then that receiving server will authenticate uh, the sender. And then based on the result, uh, it may deliver the email. If at all, uh, the rules are the established rules or configured rules are actually accurate, um, and then they'll deliver, or uh, they they may just uh, flag it as spam um, for various reasons. Uh, if at all the authentication fails, directly it may be flagged as spam or it'll go to spam. Uh, or it may just reject the email, uh, and it does not even deliver at, uh, at all. Uh, so that's uh, that can happen too. So uh, it can deliver, it may put it as a fla uh, spammy, um, or it can flag your email as spam, or it can even reject the email. Uh, so this is how the 
email authentication really work. Um, and I've kind of described the same thing that uh, any business or organization that is trying to send email, uh, they have to establish certain uh, policy uh, or define certain rules uh, which email from its domain can be authenticated. Uh, and then um, the email sender will have to configure um, the email servers and other technical infrastructure uh, to implement and publish these rules. Uh, the mail server that receives uh, these emails authenticate the message it receives by checking details about an incoming email message against the rules defined by the domain owner. So what it means basically the receiving server uh, will check all the rules that have been established uh, using all the technical infrastructure uh, and then make sure that uh, the email that is received is uh, authentic. Uh, and then it will take an action. Um, based on the result, uh, it can deliver a uh, flag or even reject the message. Okay. So one important thing that uh, we uh, basically need to understand how the internet, uh, the domain naming system or DNS really work uh, in a very simple um, uh, pictorial explanation here. Uh, for an example, uh, if you're typing in something Right, um, www domain com or exam, you know, uh, any any domain dot com. Um, basically, you are typing in URL, uh, so it actually establishes a connection to the uh, DNS server. Uh, again, DNS meaning domain naming system server. Uh, so these are all kind of um, driven by the. Uh, internet service provider, meaning if you're using uh, whoever, Comcast, at and whoever, uh, the ISP that you're using, uh, who is providing the internet, uh, internet services to you, uh, they would um, basically um, have that uh, connection established to the respective DNS servers that are available locally, and then that is going to resolve the domain to a specific IP address. So if you type in uh, www. say google.com, an example, and it'll give you an IP address back, everything happens behind the scenes, and then that IP address will have an absolute, uh, the web server um, that is actually connected for the IP address, and that web server actually gives you back the results. So that's, that's what is called the DNS, you know, uh, a very simple concept. Um, in, in other words, um, DNS um, meaning it is a phone book of the web. So if you look at the world wide web, www, the internet server architecture itself, uh, if you have a very big phone book uh, for, you know, so and so server is this, and this is what. Um, the actual domain name is, this is a physical IP address. Um, all of those details are stored in a phone book that is nothing but a DNS. Uh, and it could have a cluster of servers or in a group of servers that are actually serving uh, these details uh, for the individual uh, ISPs or you know, in a way individual uh, people um, or computers or devices that are actually uh, trying to establish a connection from your tiny device to a URL or a domain. Okay. And uh, we're going to look at what is, you know, the, the basic standards of email authentication. Again, I uh, kind of explained uh, so far that there are three uh, prominent uh, standards uh, that actually enable uh, different aspects of email authentication. Uh, so they all address uh, complementary issues, uh, meaning, um, so it kind of an ev uh, evolving uh, architecture. So uh, it's not that it is already done. Uh, you know, these are all the basics and uh, we always uh, uh, come up with certain new standards. Um, you know, there's another standard that's called BME that's more for branding. Uh, which is not uh, explained in this webinar, though. 
Uh, so we are constantly evolving so far. Uh, you know, these are the three standards that uh, uh, all the or most of the uh, email servers must be uh, establishing. So one of them is called SPF, uh, Sender Policy Framework that allows the sender to define which IP addresses are allowed to send email for a particular domain. So let's say your company domain, uh, www.abc.com, uh, when you're sending out email, uh, you would also establish certain rules where uh, you would mention that uh, you're actually going to use so and so IP address to send email. Um, you know, that's basically um, a very simple definition what uh, sender policy framework uh, means. SPF is sender policy framework. Okay. And the second one that's the DKIM. Uh, domain keys um, um, ident uh, identifies mail. Uh, that's what it means. Uh, so it has um, encryption mechanism or a digital signature that verifies that an email message was not faked or altered. So um, when you're sending out email, um, you always see the email subject and the email content. But along with that, there's something called email header that is also sent uh, along with the email. Uh, if you um, ever noticed in Gmail or Outlook, you will be able to see um, something called a show original option uh, in Gmail especially. Um, if you uh, click on that, it actually shows the email header, uh, which will have some cryptic information you, know, you may or may not understand, but it's more like a protocol uh, that you have to uh, follow in the email uh, sending infrastructure that you also have to send the email header. Uh, the way in which um, you know you basically um, are providing a digital signature kind of thing, right? Uh, and at uh, in this DKIM um, standard, you are doing the exact same thing. Uh, we'll get into more details uh, in the further uh, discussion here. Uh, and then third one is DMARC. Um, so this is again another standard um, where in which uh, you again establish certain rules that is going to unify the SPF and DKM authentication mechanism into a common framework that allows domain owners to declare how they would like email from the domain to be handled if it fails an authorization test. So it's more like uh, you have, you know, uh, a subset of uh, rules that you created SPF and DKM. And if um, these two tests fail, what do you really need to do? So the sender um, will have to establish those rules uh, saying that, hey, if uh, something goes wrong, my email authentication failed, and I want you to uh, do this or um, you know, confirm to uh, my rules, and if it fails, uh, do so and so thing kind of a thing. So that's what is DMARC. Uh, so let's take a look at SPF. Um, and again, um, trying to make it easy here. Uh, so if you are sending an email, right, um, and you basically are saying that I'm going to use so and so IP address to send this email. That IP address is stored in DNS, as we said. Um, so DNS will have the definition of the, um, you know, uh, uh, publishing published um, uh, rule uh, from you uh, that is uh, saying that so and so domain is going to use so and so IP address uh, when they're sending email. So that's stored in the DNS server. Okay, and when you're sending out email, the receiving server. Uh, is actually taking a look at um, um, the uh, sender ID uh, framework. Basically, it will establish a connection to the DNS server. It actually looks up for the SPF record uh, where you defined that, hey, I'm using so and so IP address. It looks at it. Um, that's publicly available. And also, in the email header, uh, whenever you're sending out email, every email server will send that uh, particular IP address in the email header. It is going to compare 
okay i received this email and in the header i got one so ip address that is that it is being sent um is that uh the same ip address that uh has been established publicly uh so it looks up and if it matches then authentication um is uh, passed otherwise it failed right and based on that it actually going to take a decision and see where does that email um should really go to uh, it could be going to um, inbox or it could go to the junk or quarantine and delete or uh, a block. So basically, uh, just assume that, um, you know, whatever SPF uh, rule that you've established, the receiving server is going to look at it, make sure that it is coming from the right IP address, um, and then it is going to authenticate your email and then delivers it. So uh, I've kind of explained the same thing here. Um, so basically, SPF follows a sender to verify their authentic authenticity. Uh, so uh, if you want to compare this in the postal um, mail architect, um, the uh, postal mail in general that we see, uh, something called certified mail, right? Uh, so way in which when you're sending out mail, uh, you can opt uh, that mail being a certified mail, uh, meaning. Uh, so the, when the receiver uh, receives that uh, uh, mail, uh, then you also get notified that it has been uh, delivered properly uh, to the receiver. That's called certified mail. Uh, so basically, um, that's another way to explain to us, let's say you write a letter, um, and then it is on an official letterhead, uh, then which means it is more like an authentic um, uh, mail that has been sent by you. Right, and also you've written some uh, uh, the address that is actually uh, the written, um, you know, the proper uh, address to be returned uh, if at all something happens. So that also shows the authenticity. Uh, so basically, um, you know, uh, this is all in in general kind of trying to explain uh, how does this really work uh, in a postal mail um, uh, scenario. Uh, so uh, during SPF, a receiving email server can ask the domain that the email claims to be from a list of IP addresses that are allowed to send email on the domain's behalf. If the domain does not list the originating server as a valid server, then the email is most likely not genuine and the SPF check will fail. So uh, we'll take a look at the example here. I'm not trying to complicate. Uh, so let's take a quick example about SPF. Uh, so this is again um, called a DNS record um, in technical terms, uh, which will be entered into your DNS server. So if you're established, I mean, if you uh, purchase your uh, domain from say GoDaddy uh, kind of a, um, a hosting uh, service provider, uh, they will have an interface where you basically enter all these DNS value, uh, which is uh, more user-friendly for technical people. Uh, so which will, um, you know, uh, store all this into the DNS server um, in a way. Uh, so if you look at this, uh, we are saying, hey, it's an SPF record, that's what the first statement says, we equals to SPF1, uh, and we have that IP address, IP4297, 72192919. Uh, assuming that that's the IP address provided or provisioned to you by mass mailer. Uh, that's why I kind of highlighted in, um, into red color. Uh, so let's say that is the IP address that you got from mass mailer. Uh, you will have to kind of enter that IP address value into the SPF record. Um, and then uh, you can see the other IP address. If, uh, if at all you're using any other email servers from your own organization perspective, uh, you may have other IP uh, address values that you have, um, um, you know, configured, and those ones also would be there. So basically, it is one SPF record that you're actually kind of um, um, setting up in your uh, DNS servers. Uh, and then you can see that we have certain include statements that says uh, spfgoogle.com, include spfprotectionoutlook.com, uh, and include sendgate.net, right? Uh, so the one that is highlighted in red color that says that you're actually using sendgrid.net via you know, mass mailer. So basically, mass mailer uses sendgrid behind the scenes. Uh, so we let you include uh, this include statement uh, in your SPF record. 
um, that kind of establishes or uh, authenticates your email that uh, in a way you're actually using SendGrid.net behind the scenes to send emails uh, through MassMailer. Uh, but if you have other um, Google or uh, Outlook, um, include uh, uh, statements should be there uh, that actually represent that you're actually using Google and Outlook as well. Uh, it could be any other include statement. So this is just an example. This is not a you know final one. Uh, this is just an example. Uh, kind of uh, makes you understand that when you're sending out email, um, you will have to uh, say that the email uh, will be coming from so and so uh, IP addresses. Um, so this is kind of a high level uh, what uh, SPF uh, um, looks like. Okay. Now uh, DKIM. Um, so again. It's uh, nothing but domain keys identified uh, mail. Um, again, so there are two things um, um, that are established here. One is a private key and a public key. So in uh, postal mail, there is another uh, way where in which you can actually send a registered mail. So when you're sending out a registered mail, what happens? You get a tracking number. And let's say you're sending it from here to um, you know, United States to say um, um, another country, say for example, Australia. Uh, so the um, mail is not just going to uh, a final destination. It is actually going to many other destinations in between. Uh, anywhere that it kind of it stops, uh, so the intermediate uh, locations um, that it has gone to, they will also verify and validate that it is uh, coming from the right um, uh, sender and it is going to the right uh, receiver. So they also kind of have a checkpoints in between. So uh, so multiple checkpoints can be there when you're actually sending out a um, you know uh, a postal mail. Right. Similarly, when you're sending out uh, an email, uh, so email may be going to um, you know, a destination in Australia, for example, and the in-between servers that are kind of handshaking and receiving this and then trying to deliver uh, to the internet servers way in which every uh, point it has to kind of uh, open that, um, you know, like not open the mail, but it is basically uh, checking uh, what, you, uh, what you have sent and who is the sender, who is the receiver. Uh, so it needs a key uh, to uh, kind of look at your, um, you know, the email that you sent is um, authentic or not. So that's the reason why you have the public key and private key. So private key basically helps you to uh, encrypt your uh, message uh, so that no one else can really uh, look at it. Uh, so the public key uh, is actually published to, to the DNS, uh, wherein which the receiving email server can use this public key uh, and um, kind of uh, check uh, your uh, email header, uh, make sure that it is coming from the authentic um, uh, receive, uh, sender, uh, and then it is basically gonna match. And uh, if everything goes fine, it is actually the email goes to the inbox. Uh, so that's uh, the high level what uh, DKIM means. Uh, so um, in order to explain this again, uh, it's more like a wax seal and a letter. You must have uh, seen this in olden days where uh, when certain letters are sent, you know, there's a wax seal that can be um, kind of uh, sent from uh, uh, only one sender and kind of, you know, a, a real seal that can be there as well on the, on the mail uh, that kind of um, identifies the real uh, sender. Uh, so in a way, I uh, can... Uh, compare this with the registered uh, mail um, under a lock and a key all times along with the delivery route to prevent tampering. So, um, you know, that's what uh, the registered mail says. So you get a tracking number, you can see where exactly uh, the mail is, and you know, all of that you could do with the registered mail. Um, so um, in uh, technical terms, so we uh, provide a, a cryptograph uh, fixed private key that is used to encode the message headers. That's what is a private key. Uh, only the sender will have a private key. It is not published outside. 
and the public uh, key is made available on a decentralized public internet registry called DNS or domain name system. So talk. Uh, any other servers involved in passing the message along to the final destination can retrieve the public key and decrypt the headers to verify that the message is valid. So basically, um, it's um, another uh, policy or standard where in which um, the email server gets authenticated uh, for a better delivery. Uh, this is just an example. Um, again, in Mass Mailer, we always uh, do the automa uh, automated security, um, but I've given kind of both options uh, in which you can kind of understand, you know, again, at a high level. Uh, so um, uh, automated security, you don't really see the actual key. Uh, if it's not automated uh, security, uh, which is a second example, you see that uh, you know, the cryptic key there in the second line that says P equals to MIGF, um, so and so. Uh, that's kind of a, a public key that is used to decrypt uh, the uh, email message header, uh, make sure that it is authentic, and then uh, kind of uh, send it. Uh, so this is just an example. We provide these uh, C name values, um, keeping your uh, account is automated uh, security. Uh, on and then um, we give you those C names, which is what you're going to enter into your DNS server, uh, and then establish the DKM policy uh, for your domain. Uh, so that's kind of uh, an example for uh, DKIM. Okay. Uh, so that's uh, pretty much uh, what I want to kind of explain. Um, and again, it is a little technical, um, <clears throat> but I think. Um, uh, this webinar um, would have touched uh, at a high level what um, uh, DNS all means and what email authentication meaning, uh, what is SPF, what is DKIM. Uh, in one of the future webinars, perhaps, uh, I'll try to talk about uh, DMARC, uh, which is more like a unification of SPF and DKIM, uh, and also uh, talking about um, you know, what should be done uh, if at all these authentication mechanism fails, right? So that's called the email thing. Uh, once again, um, thank you so much for joining the webinar today. So here is my contact information. If you need any further information, uh, my office number, my cell number, my uh, email address, you can also go to our website, massmiller.io, uh, send an email. Uh, if you have any questions, if you are interested in a trial, um, you know, just uh, feel free to contact us. Uh, and this is a weekly webinar uh, that runs on every Thursday um, at 9 a.m. Pacific. Uh, we uh, publish the, um, the actual topic um, onto our website. Uh, and also we send out email, if at all you're in our email list, uh, we uh, kind of publish or announce the next webinar topic to the social channels that we have, that's uh, LinkedIn, uh, Facebook, Google, Twitter, and all of those. Uh, so if you like to follow us uh, and then try to kind of get um, what the next topic is. Um, so once again, thank you so much and uh, have a great, uh, great day, a great night. Take care. Bye-bye.